In this video, I'm gonna be looking at what I think is the best way to make money with your photography in 2022. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and take a look at my sales from 2021, and then I'm gonna compare those to my sales from 2022, so we can kind of see which of the sites are increasing, where I'm getting more revenue, and where I'm getting less revenue. Then I'm gonna be talking a bit about what my plans are for 2022 um, to increase my photography sales online. Now, if you're new to the channel, let me tell you a bit about my portfolio. I primarily just take photos during my vacation, so I do this as more of a hobby where I make money from it, and then I upload them online. I've been doing this for about 10 years now, so I've got photos online. I've got probably almost a 1,000 photos on different stock sites um, uploaded over the past 10 years. Now, last year, I really didn't upload many photos. I actually looked back and I only uploaded three photos in all of 2021. So what I'm going to be going through today when I talk about my 2021 sales, all of those were photos that were uploaded from previous years. Now, this is actually kind of interesting because you can actually go through and say, like, what happens if you have a portfolio on these stock sites and don't upload anything for a year? You know, how is that going to change year to year? Which is actually interesting for me to see because I've never done this before. Typically, I will upload, you know, a couple hundred photos photos every single year. Um, it was just this past year I was super busy with other things. I still took a lot of photos, um, but I just didn't actually process them. So I, you know, really recently around Christmas time, I took some time off and started going through my photos from the year and I was literally starting in January. So I started to go through January and I am going through it now. I'm kind of catching up. I've, uh, you know, kind of allocating a bit more time to working on my photos and I'm up to June now. Um, so I will be uploading those more this year, but I just, you know, hadn't had a chance to go through and process them. And the ones that I have processed so far, I haven't uploaded yet. So even though I didn't upload many new photos in 2021, I still managed to make $3,500 from my photos. Now, again, these are all photos that I had taken and uploaded to different sites online in previous years. Okay. First, let's go take a look at them by month, and then we'll take a look at it by site. So if you look at it by month, you know, on average, I'm making $100 to $300 a year pretty consistency consistently throughout the year, except for October. It really stands out in the list there. The reason was is that in October, I had a company that come to me, and what they do is they uh, have software that has puts images on screensavers and on your desktop. And they came and they bought 65 photos from me. And I sold them those 65 photos or licenses for those 65 photos for about $1,200. So that was just, you know, a one-off sale, $1,200, but it added to the $300 that I already made that month from my other sites. And that's why um, you see October being so high. So obviously it wouldn't have been a great year for me or it would have been a significantly lower year for me if I had made that one sale. Uh, but luckily I did and, you know, they found a lot of my photos was really useful and I made quite a few um, sales through that. And one thing to note about that is when we go through and take a look at the sites, you know, that's going to be listed as, you know, a smug mug site. But obviously they found my smug mug site, which is souvenirpixels.com. It's my own website. They found that through my social media. So, you know, I see a lot of people like on the, you know, on this channel making comments, you know, social media isn't worthwhile. Well, you know, I posted social media again. I haven't done it much over this past year, but previously I posted a lot of photos on my social media and it so happened that this year year in October, somebody found one of my photos through social media. Through that, they found my website. On my website, they realized there's a lot of different photos they used and they ended up giving me uh, $1,200 for to use 65 of those photos. So there are certain cases that social media can be very useful in generating photo sales. Um, although sometimes it takes some time and you know they're fewer and far between than the stock sites where you get a much smaller amount, but much more frequently. So next we'll look at the other sites. You can see that the number two site was Shutterstock. So Shutterstock was my second, you know, biggest site for selling my photos after my own website. Uh, but it was very close, really like a dollar off from Fine Art America. So, you know, I have my photos up on Shutterstock. The same photos for the most part are up on Fine Art America. And, you know, I managed to make about $450 from each of those followed up by Adobe Stock and Pexels. Um, so Adobe Stock, you know, again, one of the big stock companies. It's always been slightly lower for me than Shutterstock has, but still a pretty good year for that. Um, and then Pexels. Pexels, people ask about this all the time on the channel, but Pexels, you give away your photos for free, so anybody can use them for free. Um, however, a lot of people will decide to donate, okay? Um, and by say, not a lot, is you know, one in a thousand or one in 10,000. But I, my photos, some of them rank fairly high in the searches in Pexels. So I get, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views on Pexels. So even that small percentage of people that donate, it adds up over the year and it ends up being $322 in donations. Okay. As you kind of go down there, you'll see kind of the smaller micro stock sites as we move along um, for that different revenue. 
Now let's take a look at what the change was between 2020 and 2021. I think this is the best indicator of, you know, what the sites will potentially be good in 2022. because so we can kind of see, you know, how they increased year over year. So obviously because of that one big sale that I had on my website, it was the biggest increase. Um, if you took away that sale, it probably would have been about the same as it was in 20, um, 2020 and 2021 would have been about the same. Um, the biggest increase was Adobe stock at about a hundred dollars. Um, so again, not a huge increase on that site. Actually, Adobe stock had a fairly, it was much lower for me in 2020. So it kind of just got back up to, you know, what it was in 2019 in 2021. And most of that I think was due to their free site, right? One of the things that Adobe did in 2021 was they basically introduced a free site where you can download photos for free. However, for the photographers, you could nominate your photos to be put there and the photographer got paid $5. And I probably made, I had about 20, 20 photos go up onto that free site, which equated to about $100, which is why my Adobe stock went up. Okay. Looking at the rest of the sites, the kind of major stock sites, I think the most surprising thing here is that they all increased slightly, but the fact that they didn't decrease. Because if you think about it, you know, I didn't upload any photos for an entire year, all right? So what I would have expected was, you know, a more of a decrease in the sales on the sites, but they stayed about the same or increased slightly. I think that's because of COVID. I think, you know, my sales were lower in 2020 already because of COVID. And so maybe, you know, because COVID lightened up and there was a bit more traveling going on in 2021, they increased um, by a little bit, but then obviously decreased by a little bit because I didn't upload photos. And so just stayed about the same. So no huge shifts here um, in the changes. You can kind of see there for the most part, I'm making about the same now as I was then. Um, the one big one here is free pick. Um, free pick, I don't really use it anymore. It was kind of like in 2020, I uploaded photos there for a couple months and I made like $100 in a couple months, which looked really good. But after that, it went really downhill, free pick. Um, another thing with free pick is that you know, all the, I, I filled out a number of forms to get verified, to get paid, and they came back and asked me for additional paperwork. I don't know how to get this paperwork. I've asked for their support team for help. I can't get the paperwork, so I can't even withdraw my, my earnings because they're asking for tax forms that my comp country doesn't seem to give out, and it is, it's just not worth the hassle. So FreePick did go way down. I'm no longer, you know, uploading photos to free, FreePick. It just seems they're very difficult and again you know people warned me about this on the channel when i started uploading there and i got some good results but um you know as it turns out you know um those comments are right i probably shouldn't have went in there but you know that's how you learn right by making the mistake so i won't be uploading there anymore um also saw a bit of a decrease in pexels but you know it was still pretty high in the list as you can see from before so there just wasn't quite as many uploads i think that really just has is mainly due to the fact that pexels probably prioritizes newer photos more right if you look at something like shutterstock they're going to rank your photos high in the search engine because if they've been sold in the past i've got lots of photos that have been sold in the past whereas pexels because there's not sales on there they're always always wanting to show new content and so they're a newer site as well too so probably because i didn't upload any photos there that's why that revenue went down so obviously the next big question is, you know, what are my new plans for 2022? So the first thing is I'm really, you know, I want to get back into processing my photos and uploading my photos and selling them online. As I mentioned at the start, I'm kind of behind on that, but I have been catching up throughout January. Uh, I'm up to June now and I really do want, you know, so I'll be processing the rest of the year. I took a ton of photos over the summer. Um, I did a lot of traveling over the summer. Um, and so I've got a ton of photos to process. So it'll take me a while to get through them but within the next couple of months. I want to process those, you know, get them online, get them on the different stocks sites okay um however i'm going to be doing things a bit differently this year like when i go through and i look at the sales of my photos most of the photos that i sold in 2021 were photos that i took more than five years before and my top photo this photo here that i'll, I'll pull up it is my top photo every year. It's been my top photo every year for the past five years. And I took it in 2012. So it's 2022. It's a 10 year old photo and it's consistently been my best photo, right? And you know, I can go out and take much better photos now than I was in 2012. In 2012, I had, you know, an entry level DSLR camera um, that I was taking the photos with. Now I've got 
a significantly better camera because that's what I use my stock um, sales to purchase. Um, you know, so there's a better camera, I'm better at processing, I'm better at taking photos, but I don't think I can match that photo. The reason is, is that the way the stock sites work right now is they really prioritize photos with past sales. So it's much better to have a photo that was uploaded in 2012 that was an average photo than to upload a really good photo in 2022. And that 2012 photo, because it's been sold thousands of times over the past 10 years. It will rank higher in the search engines on sites like Shutterstock and because it ranks higher, more people will buy it than going up and uploading a photo now. Now there's obviously some exceptions to this. You know, it is still possible to get into the stock industry. It's just a lot more work now than it was before. And the reason is, is because back then there weren't as many photos, right, on the on these sites, right? There was a lot less competition, a lot more people, there's a lot more demand to buy the stock sites because these were micro stock sites. It was something that was new. And these sites were growing much more quickly. But if you look at Shutterstock and, you know, Getty these days, they're growing at an average of five to 10% a year, right? And so every new photo you upload, you're kind of, you know, fighting for that extra five or 10% with a large number of other people. It's just the market has got much more mature now than it was 10 years ago. So what I really want to focus on in 2022 is looking for kind of new ways and new creative ways to sell my photos online um, and kind of, kind of to make money for my photography. The thing I'm really starting to realize too with the stock photography market is that it really has kind of stagnant, it's become a mature market. Um, and then there's not a lot of innovation happening anymore. You know, if I look at, you know, what happened with my stock photos or the things that were happening with stock photo sites between 2012 and 2017, there was a lot of changes going on, you know, a lot of increase. Increases. Um, I was seeing the month over month, year over year. The stock sites were changing. Everybody, there was a very competitive market. But what's happened now is you've kind of got the big players like uh, Getty, you know, Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, and they're just making incremental improvements. And you know, other sites are trying to pop up. You know, we did have some success with you know Pixabay and Upsplash and the free sites, but they just all ended up getting pawed out by the bigger players, anyways. So it just really seems that everything stagnated. And it wasn't that way back in 2012 when I started. But really from 2017 to 2021, there hasn't really been a lot of changes. And I think kind of the industry is really due for some innovation, right? Buyers, you know, aren't very happy. You know, I think they're, they're somewhat happy, I would say, with these stock sites. Um, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages. I would say in general, you see a lot of photographers aren't happy with them. So you've got, you know, lukewarm happy, customers or buyers, you've got unhappy photographers. I mean, there's kind of better ways that are going to come out and there will be more innovation going forward in this industry. And that's what I want to, you know, focus on because the reason that I'm getting these still getting sales from 2012 is because I uploaded my photos earlier on and then I've just been making revenue from 10 years. I want to kind of look forward and say, where is the growth going to be going forward? And I'm going to try to get and sell my photos that way. And for me, what I'm looking at is NFTs and blockchain technology. Technology. I've kind of really, you know, doubled down on doing a lot of learning over the past month. That's like one of the reasons why I've been so busy. And so I'm over the course of 2022, what I'm really going to be focusing on is finding new ways to sell my photos primarily with NFTs. So I actually have been experimenting with selling my photos as NFTs since past March, and I haven't had a lot of success. I think the reason though that I haven't had a lot of success is there's not a lot of NFT, well, there's really no NFT marketplaces set up that are really focusing on stock photography or stock photography buyers, right? So, you know, NFTs, the way they're set up right now, and I've talked about this before on the channel, they're really set up for collectors, right? Nobody, people don't want to collect my photos. But as you can see, people do want to license my photos. And there's no licensing NFT out there. Um, and I, well, not that I've been able to find, if you know of anybody, let me know in the comments, okay? Now, you know, one of the good things though is that I know it's not out there right now, but I totally see that it's possible to create. And, you know, photography is my hobby and selling my photography as stock is my hobby, but my profession is software developer. However, I'm not a blockchain developer. I can't build NFTs or I couldn't build NFTs, I guess maybe I should say, because one of the reasons that I was so busy in the second half of last year was around learning blockchain technology and NFTs. And I actually, between um, September to December, I went and I got a certification on blockchains, learned how to become a blockchain developer. And now I'm actually a certified blockchain developer.
And as part of that, I'm actually working on an NFT that can be licensed. So my plan for 2022 is to go ahead, you know, create an NFT where people can go through and license my photos through an NFT and then sell my photos directly to people, very similar to the way that I do on my Smug Mug website. And I really feel that this is probably a better model going forward for selling photos. And, you know, I foresee it growing. I don't foresee, you know, NFTs totally taking over the photography industry and killing Shutterstock, but I use foresee that it will gradually be a better way to license photos and it will take market share around from from Shutterstocks and the uh, the Getty images of the world. And if I can get in early, like I did with the stock companies, you know, 10 years ago, um, you know, I think there's going to be more growth in selling your photos or licensing your photos as NFTs than there will be just sticking with the regular companies. So that's where I'm really going to be focusing my time on in 2022. This is also probably going to influence the way that I, you know, post videos on this channel. You know, in the second half of last year, as I got busy with my with my course and learning and working on the uh, the licensable NFT, I really didn't have as much time to focus on videos. So I haven't done one since I think September. And even before that, I was really just doing one video a month, going over my stock sales, and I kind of felt like they're getting a bit boring. So I will still post photos like this, talking about my stock sales or talking about interesting things that happen. But I probably won't do it every month. I think I'll probably do it once a quarter. So I'll do maybe four of these a year. Where I'm going through and just kind of looking at my stock sales and I plan on doing a lot more content on NFTs, you know, selling my photos as NFTs, setting up NFTs, kind of some of the work that I'm doing, the results of that. So just, you know, as far as the channel goes, that's going to be a change in 2022. There's going to be a lot more NFT focus. And, you know, you may have actually found this photo. If you started following me in 2021, it's most likely you actually found me through my NFT videos. I did one NFT video back in March and it was by far the most popular video of the year for me. So I know a lot of you are actually looking into this the same things I am um, so I'm gonna be talking about it a lot more you know if that interests you make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will be kind of focusing on that over 2022 anyways I hope you found this somewhat useful and as always best of luck selling your photos online